Tonight's special episode of Infected is brought to you by IAFD.com, the premier resource for information about pornography on the web. Missing persons, who's calling? This is Dale. Dale Smith. Okay, Dale, are you calling to report someone missing? Yes. Who, who's gone missing, Dale? Pornography. I can't find my pornography. It's just gone. And out there on the internet, there's just so much, there's so, there's so much to wave through. And it, just, it, it all looks alike to me. I'll never find my pornography. Okay, Dale, don't panic. It's a common problem. Dale, stop making that noise, Dale. Stop it. All you need to do is to visit the Internet Adult Film Database at IAFD.com. It's the premier database for pornography on the web. From there, it's just a hop, skip, and a few clicks to your porn, Dale. Um, black nurse double penetration? Yeah, we've got it right here, Dale. I found it already at IAFD.com. <sighs> Jesus. IAFD.com. Toss off a batch today. Gator here. So a couple days ago, I was doing what I'm always doing on a Tuesday afternoon. I was sitting down at the at the local schoolyard up in the bleachers watching the ninth grade girls field hockey team do practice. I had on my poncho and I had me a cooler of beer and I had on that my headset with some corn playing in there. I was I should have been in heaven, man. It's one of my favorite things to do on earth. But for some reason that day, Gator didn't feel so good. I felt a little bit off. I felt bad. Now granted, I do always like it when it's a uh, when it's game day as opposed to just practice because that's a little bit more exciting you know the girls have a certain intensity about them on game day and they get to wear them little plaid skirts and them tall socks jesus christ god damn gator likes that but practice is the next best thing but like i said i should have been felt feeling good but i was feeling a little bit off and just right then i stood up and i vomited and gator vomited hard <laughs> That shit just spattered out on the bleachers, and I, I vomited again, and again, and I just couldn't stop. And I, and by, I finally, when I came to stop, I looked up at the out of the field, and the practice had even come to a stop. All them girls were just standing there, kind of looking at me, dumbfounded. They were, they were, I've had to say they looked scared, you know, like they'd seen something horrible. And I was staring back at them. The coach's whistle fell right out of her mouth, and. And I vomited again right then, just, oh man, I'm making an awful racket. Gator was screaming, I had my ponchos all clotted up with sick, and I slipped right then and hit my head on the bleachers and cracked my skull open, and the last thing I remember, laying there in a puddle of my own sick, is them field hockey players coming standing around me, looking down at me like ruddy-faced little angels. And then I just, everything just kind of faded, crept in and faded to black. So I wake up and I don't know how much longer later it is. I don't know. I'd lost all track of time and whatnot. And I could hear some beeping and buzzings going on. And I look around me and I'm in a goddamn intensive care unit. Not only that, I'm in a bubble, like a plastic bubble, like boy in a bubble type deal, like a plastic bubble tent. And next to me over there, right next to me, I look over and there on a cot next to me is Martin Sargent. And he's laying there all trussed up. They got him trussed up in some kind of goddamn diaper with a leg bag on it. It's the most fucked up thing I've ever seen. He looks about just this side of death. Like a de- like death eating a crap sandwich is what he looked like. And then the guy, I look down at the, my foot of my bed and there's a nurse standing there. Or I don't know who it was, a man or a doctor or whatever. I couldn't see because they was wearing some kind of hazmat suit. And I couldn't even see through the reflector shield on the front of that damn thing. But this person down at the foot of my bed is holding up a picture. Saying, look at this, look at this picture you know who this man is and so i look in the picture and it's joey i said that's joey and they say well we have reason to believe that joey has the avian bird flu and that he spread it throughout the western united states the entire western united states and that our close contact with him had likely made us carriers as well and that's when i'd about heard a goddamn enough i stood up and i pushed that goddamn doctor in the suit away and i grabbed martin i slung him over my shoulder and i plunged right through the side of that goddamn bubble tent and i ran down the hallway and the alarms are going off and the buzzers and the cops and the doctors are running around. I sprung out in the parking lot there. And I flagged down a Toyota Crescent and I threw Martin in the side. And he'd about shat himself all over by this time. I shit running down his thighs and his legs. And I threw him in the Crescent and we sped off. That's when we made it over to the main sale top-notch lounge. 
and I said, I ordered up us, I ordered us a couple of whiskeys. And I propped Martin up on the thing, and I went over to the drugstore, and I got some Zycam, and then we ordered some pickled eggs. I guess that secured a bird flu, whiskey, Zycam, and pickled eggs, because within an hour, I felt good enough to try to pick up on the waitress. And Martin was already singing karaoke, and he's standing there in his goddamn diaper with that leg bag still on. And as for Joey, Joey never felt bad at all. I think he's the target of some kind of massive manhunt trying to stem the spread of the avian bird flu. So we better go ahead and get this podcast done. Since the men in the black suits might break in at any minute and haul his little bird ass away. But I'm glad to know Joey apparently is immune to the bird flu. And that it's easily cured with a couple whiskeys, some pickled eggs, and maybe a little bit of that Zycam and get down at the Walgreens. So let's do this podcast. Gator out. Infected. 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 Hello and welcome to Infected, the dead twin growing from the fat back torso of digital culture. I'm Internet's Martin Sargent. Of course, as always, I'm sitting around the sticky kitchen table here at Casa del Sarge with two towering giants of the new burgeoning world of podcastry, Joey and the Gator. How you doing, Martin? I'm doing good. Joey? Nah. 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 Oh, wow. 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 A great many things have happened since the last podcast. Monumental, life-altering, crazy things have happened to some of us sitting around this table here. I got my truck transmission changed out. That's that's not a, that's not what I was referring to, actually. But that's great. It was a big deal for me. All right, what <laughs> else has happened? Well, I guess the main thing is our gorgeously plumed Joey bird. Joey. Joey. He's molted. That's Joey right. is molted. Infected Army, Joey has cut his hair. I already changed my MySpace photo. We, we never thought we'd, we'd see the day. What is your MySpace, anyway? Uh, you MySpace. Know? dot com slash Joseph Rabier. Yo, yo. It's off <laughs> infected. You can find if you can find the infected page on MySpace. You can find mine. Yo, you look kind of like Keanu Reeves. You do. You look like Neo. If you worked at a Russian, you circus. take that back right now. God damn it! You look like Neo. You man. take that shit back. Well, Don't compare not... me to a shitty actor. Joey, you look kind of like. <laughs> do you know what you used to look like? <laughs> Yeah, I think that's a pretty good compliment, man. You look like a boxer from like the 1700s. <laughs> Just because I'm wearing this wife beater. You're why you're in a wife beater too. Where's your usual jacket? I'm the only one now wearing a wife it's beater. It's hot, Joey. Shit, it's warm here in Los Angeles. You got some amazing armpit hair, sir. So Joey, Joey, he's turned. He's he's gone from an ugly duckling into a beautiful, yet still very creepy looking swan. <laughs> I'm a sexy bitch now, baby. Uh, how, how's the new haircut treating you? I noticed that there's sort of a new swagger about you. There is. You know, it's it's really opened my eyes to how fucking superficial you women are. I get a haircut. Oh, it's Joey. Turn your head. Look at me. I'm hot shit. With long oh, hair, no one looks. T- <laughs> look the, the fuck is that people shit? People were scared to look, man. They thought you were going to pull a saw off You know, the 7-Eleven has started to smile at me a lot more rather than kind of uh, reaching under the table. <laughs> oh, okay, you finally got there. The girl at 7-Eleven has started to look at me. Yeah, Joe. That story. Well, one time I was walking down the street with Joey. I was on Wilshire Boulevard. <laughs> me and Joey. Joey and the Gator walking along and these, this little group of, uh, like, they are probably like 13, 14 year old black girls came walking by a big posse of them. They got about 10 feet within view, and they all, one of them stopped and looked and pointed at him and goes, A pervert! <laughs> <laughs> like a pervert! <laughs> they all like crossed, up, they crossed over the other side of the street. That's, but that's how everyone used to look at you, Joe. You're wearing that black tra- wool trench coat. It'd be like 90 degrees out here in Los Angeles. You walk around with that huge oh. mane of, of crinkly hair and that black trench coat, and you expect. You expect you didn't get some poontang that way? Now, Joey, you talk like you're getting a lot of you're getting a lot of action now. You, you were up at an anime convention up in San Jose. Now everyone knows that if you're going to get any ladies, you're going to go up to an anime convention in San Jose. What was the reaction up there when you were walking through? The reaction was pretty good, but personally, I don't really pay attention to the women there because the anime convention for me is just an ego boost. There are some sad little men there, sad little women. It's got to be real bad, man, when Joey, when Joey the Bird goes somewhere for an ego uh, burst. Explain what are they? how it's an ego boost. What do you mean by that? Oh, 
Oh, it's just nasty. So nasty. I mean, there are just people there. What do you mean? Who, well, you know, it's one thing. You push people around? You beat people up? No, 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 no. Not until the rave. But, you know, it's a (laughs) rave at an anime convention. There is a rave. I was bumping and grinding on many women at the rave at the anime convention. It's a good time for all. Like like girls in, like, costumes and shit. You're probably, like, you're probably a house in (laughs) Manfei. God, no. I didn't know people still had them raves. I, I, I got to get to one. Did you, do, did you do some extra? No, no one had any. I did buy a couple of glow sticks and tried drinking those. Do you have a pacifier in your mouth? You tried to drink a glow stick? I don't know. Oh, you kids today. What the hell's going on? It's fun. Is it with the new haircut, is masturbation better? That's more streamlined. <laughs> <laughs> so now you, now you got this new look, you can get rid of the trench coat? I don't know. We've been talking about having a trench coat bonfire in a few weeks with uh, the many trench coats on uh, somewhere in the Venice Beach area. Just <laughs> we're going to have to all wear our hazmat suits for that. <laughs> Fumes have come off that thing. You should raffle those off at one of those anime conventions. You know what? Maybe we should put them on up on uh, eBay. Your, your trench coat? Yeah, why not? Fine. Let's do it. Let's put Joey's trench coat up on eBay. We'll de-louse him before. One size fits all, baby. Yeah, that's me. All right, great. There you go. Start looking. Yeah, we, for well, it. I got to say though, for real, you do look. You look magnificent. You do, Joe. You look well, very handsome. Nice, folks. Folks. Truly appreciate it. Yeah. So some, something life altering uh, happened in my life as well. Uh, last weekend, while, while at Mission Gator and I went down to San Diego. Oh yeah, wow! Yeah, down, we were down at Mission Beach, and I was nearly <laughs> taken by the sea. <laughs> I go, I'm going down to Mission Beach. It was morning. It was a goddamn sick. I was, I was half in the bag. I was, I was still drunk from the night before. I was, re- I was reading. I, I was, s- stumbled down to the beach. I get in the water. It was a heavy day. There was a lot of surf. A lot of surf. Kids, Jesus. kids, families there. I go, I was splashing around the water. A lot of Next push. thing I know, I look up. I'm about a hundred meters out. I was I was laying, let me fill in here. I was laying there reading my, my Us magazine, drinking some peach schnapps. I was about to fall asleep, and I hear the guy next to me say, that guy's caught in a goddamn riptide. And I popped up. I said, Martin? <laughs> I looked out there, and I saw him. I saw Martin about 100 yards out. He was flailing around. I had to be rescued. I just uh-huh. sat. <laughs> the lifeguard had to come out and get me and bring me back in. Was it an easy rescue? or did No. I, I, he's like, get on the board. The board. He's on a surfboard. Well, so that's what. Surfboard. As soon as I looked up there, I saw that guy streak past with his rescue board. <laughs> he, he could pull he, he's like, I'm, I'm laying on the board. He's, he keeps going, get back farther on the board. We can't. We're paddling, and paddling. We can't get in. Like the under the the rip current. Wait, wait. You had to ref. You had to fucking row yourself. Yeah. Well, he was on the back and Martin was on the front, and there was a long board, and, and I was, I was watching the thing, and Martin was. They were trying to paddle in, but the rip tie was pulling them back out. You know, like, it was too strong for a big cut. Lifeguard and yourself both paddling as hard as you could? Yeah, it was the sea, Joe. I'm unfamiliar with any form of water. You know, the showers are foreign to me. The sea is a very powerful... So he finally get back in. He just dumps me there in about four foot of water. Martin. He's like, don't don't swim here anymore. If you're going to swim, go swim over there. Martin had seaweed all over. And, like, I'm afraid that I'm going to get pulled back out again. And Gator doesn't even, like, budge. He just, like, <laughs> still, like, he's in the middle of this Us magazine. And I was already firing up my truck to get the hell and out. And there's of about a thousand people on the beach, and they're all staring at me. It's the most embarrassing goddamn thing that's ever happened to me in my life. And I'm, like, exhausted. I, I get out of the water, and I, like, I'm, I'm fucking crawling up the beach. <laughs> Martin had a big strand of seaweed hanging off his it was terrible. My pants were half off. My board shorts were half off. It was it was it was a scary thing, man. I thought I was gonna have to call. People. It was a life changing thing, man. I've totally changed my life. I thought I was gonna have to call all, all the people you know and and say, "I'm sorry." Today at three twenty seven p.m., the sea took my friend Martin. <laughs> They're like, what do you mean? Like, the sea took him. I don't know how much more plain I can put it. The sea took Martin. <laughs> the sea took him, and he's gone. He's like, we're gonna have a, a beach burial. So it's Where's totally board a life changing thing. So it, it's board the, shorts uh, washed uh, up about a day and a half later. That's the last we ever saw. We found his board shorts washed up on a beach in the Philippines. Can't find the rest of them. It was damn scary. That was it was, scary. man. It was terrible. The only one, you know, and you're lucky the there's one, a lifeguard there. The guy. one thought that went through my head as I was like out there and I realized that I was fucked was this would be the fucking stupidest way to die. Yeah. Fucking drunk in the morning. Well, that's not the dumbest way to die. There's dumber ways. Exactly. My friend Kenny fell off the back of his. Um, he was trying to, trying to surf his pickup truck. 
Got hit, true. Got hit by a got hit by a low lying branch and split his head wide open. True story. Deader than a deader than a goddamn post. All right, that is worse. <laughs> but you're lucky there was a lifeguard there because if it had just been me, you would be you'd probably would be dead because you got your one. You're gonna be pulling you weren't, you weren't in any better shape than I was. Oh, this is what I'm saying. I'm saying you were I'm pulling off the same bottle of wild turkey. That's, that what, I was. that's what I'm saying. Now there's not, not gonna be any dramatic rescues on my part. I'd be out there. I could come out there and die too. So you know, I just could change my like new thing. You know, Bob Barker, like at the end of all his Price <laughs> Right episodes, he's like, you know, control the pet population, get your pets spayed, and you're from now on. Next, you know, next TV show I do, everything I do. Gonna, I'm going to do like a little PSA for Riptides. This is Martin Sargent saying, don't get ripped by the Riptide. Because people got to know. I actually get back. I, we finally stole him back to the apartment. I go on the internet. I'm like, why don't any other people get drowned? Like I almost did. And I go on the internet. And I'm like, it's like one person every two years. I tell them, that's how stupid I was. One person every two years drowns out there. But like 7,000 people get rescued. I got to get these people. Uh, these 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 lifeguards. I mean, he saw me doing. He must have saw me stumbling out there, and he knew he that this guy is like in trouble prayer. before I even got my toes in the water. He's like, I'm gonna have to go after this. This was a stupid motherfucker. That guy was on point. He he laid a preemptive strike down and got got that thing out there. And on those little PSAs you do, you should have two little characters called Flotsam well, and Jetsam. Be like a, yeah. you're like, you're like, hi, we're Flotsam and Jetsam. Let's go play in the Riptide. You're like, whoa there, Flotsam and Jetsam. I'm Martin Sargent. Don't get ripped by the riptide. Like, hey, okay. <laughs> Thanks, Martin. Anyway, be careful, Lots riptides, of, people. It's some serious business. Uh, all right. Serious business. That's what happened to us at Celeste. <laughs> Gator got a new transmission. Joey cut his hair, and I almost got taken by the sea. Good times. So that's what's going on. been going on in our lives. It's been a busy three weeks. Yeah. Anyway, we're going to go uh, bury Joey's hair in the backyard. Maybe it'll grow into a Joey tree. I think it crawled away. <laughs> <laughs> it's not in that shoebox anymore. We'll be right back. Hair. Tonight's special episode of Infected is brought to you by IAFD.com, the premier resource for information about pornography on the web. Welcome to Straight Talk with Stone Gertman. Greetings, I'm Stone Gertman, and on today's show, a special, if controversial, guest, pornography. Pornography, welcome to Straight Talk. Thanks for having me, Stone. Now, porn, may, may I call you porn? May I call you cocksucker? What? I'm just kidding, Stone. Of course you can. Oh, you got me there, porn. <laughs> okay, so porn, a lot of folks out there think of you as a, a stain on the fabric of our society. What do you say to this? Well, Stone, I've caused a lot of stains on various fabrics. <laughs> <laughs> but on society, no. Nothing could be further from the truth. It's total poppycock. So, porn, do you serve a greater good? Well, I like to ride my bike, Stone. And sometimes when I'm out sailing along, wind in my long porn locks, I think about a world without me. Pretty null, don't you think? Well, you've got a point there, porn. Stone, a lot of people hate me, but you'd be surprised how many of those very people are out there tossing off badges to me all day long. Good point, porn. So, porn, where can people find you? The best place to find me is at the Internet Adult Film Database at IAFD.com. I'm there in all my basic forms. Barely 18, black on white, white on black, Asian, big titties, and a whole lot more exotic forms as well. I think you know what I'm talking about. Uh, I do like a good DPS to mouth scene. <laughs> <laughs> You're alright, Stone. And so are you, porn. <laughs> <laughs> IAFD.com, home to all the porn information you could ever need, even if you are a sick bastard. So, Stone, you wanna... Fuck? Sure, why the hell not? Infected. 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 Welcome back to Infected. Hey, Gator, have you noticed that uh, ever since Joey cut his hair, he's developed some kind of a twitch? Yeah, he seems a little nervous. And his movements are kind of jerky. It's kind of, kind of like when you see one of them one-legged bedragged pigeons he's like... trying to eat cigarette butts out of the gutter. <laughs> He's just kind of moving like that. He's got that kind of jerk about him. He's got a, he's got a tick of some sort. 
What's right. up with that, Joe? Right. He's, he's paranoid that hair's going to come back and strangle him. <laughs> he's got an awful sunburn, too. I know, I know. The, the hair was like an umbrella for him. Like it shielded me. You know, I still like wave my hair around. Like it's still breaking it out of my face. Do you miss it? A little bit. Yeah. yeah, it was a friend. It's like it's like when like it's dude, like thirty degrees colder now, dude. Dudes who lose like a limb in the war, they could still feel it. Could you hear it screaming Could, like fan, phantom pains? Phantom. He still get, he gets phantom lights. He gets phantom. <laughs> he gets phantom burns when he lights a cigarette in his hair. Anyway, uh, uh, la- last episode we we gave you guys an assignment to draw a picture of Gator hitting something in his truck. Oh yeah, and uh, we got we got some real good submissions this time. I got to say the level of artwork has gone up since the last fiasco. It's pictures of Joey getting very badly hurt. A beautiful fucking picture. Some real good ones here. What are some of the this? this which well, I like the, my favorite ones. The one. Uh, What's that one with Joey bound to the front? That's the best one. That's the winner. We got Gator in his truck. He's driving it. I'm riding bitch in the truck. Ricky Kang is hanging out the window with a baseball bat knocking down. The best part of his is Joey's feet are dragging on the ground. There's a little stain of blood. A little blood trail, yeah. He's he's all the way up to his knees. Because, like, it's all (laughs) rubbed down to a bony nub. Who did did that one? That's Adam Ott. Adam Winner. Good work, fella. I don't know what you're going to win. But we'll send you something. Send me your, your address. And then you got this one here. This is from Buck Coyle. It's a picture of Gator. Uh, he's running over some lady. And Gator's saying, Gator don't owe you shit, bitch. I'm going to sell the trailer and buy schnapps. I guess that's his girlfriend or his wife. What is that in the background? There's in the background there's the weirdest thing. There's like this dude, this black dude with an afro who's fully erect. We got a real creative audience. <laughs> that's from when I lived in Africa. That guy knows my history. That's it. That's a, that's some real that's an interesting little piece. Of and, and I would the, never say that. The the last one here is uh the, the, the I guess the third winner. Wow. Is uh I don't wow. I don't know how to explain it. It's Joe it's Gator in a truck with this sad sun looking down and then <laughs> I like that sad. And it says here Joe Joey then says Gator even if you destroy me my amazing phallus will live on. Well, I guess Gator's driving in a Martin's house here and Joey's in the window and he's like got this what the I don't know. It seems to be a magnificent phallus, and it's on. And Joey is in a state of ecstasy. <laughs> he's he's blowing ropes. <laughs> yes, Joey's working off a of batch. I'd put a chain around that thing tied to my bumper. So if you're watching the Peep Show episode, you you, you saw the pictures that we were just talking about there. If if you're not, which you really should be, um, you can see all all those three plus all the other submissions over at sargeworld.com. It's it's really worth a visit. There was some real nice work. Real there. good job out all there, the way, fellas. All the way around, good work. You, you, you did good work this time. I'm proud of y'all. All right, time for tonight's first check in high tech tech news ticker. A woman in England due to give birth on June 6th is fighting with her hospital to induce her sooner to avoid delivering on the demonic date of 666. Melissa Parker, she's 30 years old. She says she's a fan of the Omen, which, of course, is about a demonic child. Uh, She says she's concerned. She's going to give birth on this day. She says, I'm terrified the birth will go wrong or the child will have evil in him or her. Even worse, my beautiful baby could be the devil himself, the Antichrist. Oh, my God. I don't think that that's a possibility medically. However, I do think it's a foregone conclusion that your baby is going to be retarded just like you. <laughs> Burn. Stupid. That reminds me of a story. <laughs> Tell us a retarded baby story, Gator. No, it's about Joey's hair. They put Joey's hair in a shoebox, right? And I put, put it under your bed. And the other day before the podcast, I went to pull that shoebox out and I opened it up. And six little black crows flew out of the box. <laughs> Flew away into the night. (laughs) Now, hair was gone. There was no hair. Just those six little black crow birds flew off into the night. Joey, 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 Joey. They should come out with like a Joey horror movie. Horror movies are all rage right now. The thing about just Joey's hair, like creepy crawling around. It's about, it's about this filthy guy who gets a haircut. A filthy finally, man who lost his hair. And the hair just starts crawling all over Los Angeles and just starts infesting people with license. You like wake up in the middle of the night and like go to the get a glass of water and open the 
open the faucet and like look out the window and all the Joey's faces right there in the window. Lauren's actually seen that a few times, haven't you? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, Joey moved out moved in two houses down from me. I need Talk it. about life altering. I think that's more horrifying than almost being taken by the sea. At least he doesn't live in your shed anymore. <laughs> You know, Catch Schwartz, uh, she's pregnant. She's supposed to give birth on 666. Her due date is 666 as well. Yeah. Get out of here. Mm-hmm. I, I, I share the same birthday as Malcolm Jamal Warner, Theo Huxtable from uh, a Cosby show, which I think Malcolm must have Jamal some Warner. cosmic significance. That's horrifying. <laughs> Malcolm Jamal Warner. Have you seen Warner. House of Cosby's? House of Cosby's? What yeah. is that? Some kind of horror? It was a great little uh, user-made thing where they cloned a bunch of Cosby kids, and it was just, it was wild shit. Oh, about all the Cosby's on the bus? No, no. Somebody no, posted no, something no. on, on the, my MySpace, myspace.com slash infected by Martin. Oh, was Clark. that the poop bus? It was the Cosby bus. A Cosby bus. Maybe the poop bus. <laughs> I don't know. I thought it was Cosby. I got Maybe the poop it was bus a turd. It's being driven by Bill Cosby, and he's just kind of waving around. But no, no, That's what I'm like thinking a, of. I'm getting my Cosby's confused. Anyway, uh, a lot of you folks out there in Sarge world have been saying that uh, Gator here looks a lot like Ricky Kang, and uh, that both men are in fact the same person, kind of like Clark Kent and Superman. Hell no! Well, I that's ain't. bullshit. That's not, that's not true. And so to prove it, what we're going to do is we're going to get Ricky Kang on the telephone here, and we're going to let Gator interview him to prove. The Gator and Ricky Kang are actually not the self same person, but two very distinct individuals, right, Gator? Man, uh, yeah, Ricky, Ricky and I are from the same, same area, Florida, Gainesville, right? Yeah, down around Gainesville, but um, as far as I know, he ain't no kin to me. But I'm gonna call him up. We're gonna talk. Joey, can we get can we get Ricky on the phone? All right, I'm dialing. I can see how people say there's a resemblance. It's not totally cockamamie story. All right, it's ringing. There might be, you know. Uh, it's ringing. Here we go. Come on, with it. Ricky? Fuck. Um, Cody, put that down. Cody, put that. Cody, put that motherfucking thing down. I can't hear the, can't, can't hear the goddamn phone. Ricky Kane, can, can you hear me? Who? Ricky. What? What? Who the fuck is this? It's Gator, man. Gator, man, what the... What are you, like, part man, part gator? It's Gator from Infected with Martin Sargent. Martin! Quasi Toto, buddy! How you doing, man? No, no, Ricky, this is Gator. It ain't Martin. Oh, Gator, what's up, brother? You in Gainesville? No, man, I was just calling to shoot the shit. Man, what's up in Gville? Shit, man, my boy Cody Cheyenne just killed the neighbor's dog. But it was an accident. What? What, he killed it? What, he hit it with the truck? Hell no, man. He's only 11 years old. He can't drive yet. Nah, he done it with his bare hands, man. God damn. Yeah, that little boy's a little motherfucker, man. He part wild. I can't do nothing with him. He like his daddy, little ass kicker, little wild man, little motherfucker. How do how do you kill that dog, Ricky? H- hold up, Gator. Here comes that cocksucker up from next door. Hold up. Hold up, what? The fuck you mean, what? Keep that untrainable cur off my fucking lawn and we ain't gonna have no goddamn problems. What? What? Ricky? Cody, no, man. Put him down. Cody. Damn it, boy. Cody. Hold up. I can call you back. Ricky? 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 You there? Well, there you go, everyone. That proved it. That proved it. Ricky Kang, Gator, two different people. Two different people. Like Robin Williams and uh, Ms. Doubtfire. There you go. Good analogy, Joe. Yeah. I didn't even know him coming up. No? No. You guys ain't kin. I don't know. My mom, be. My mama used to run around like some kind of, <laughs> kind of swamp there dog. There is some resemblance. She she ran around like a swamp dog. I don't know what. <laughs> what uh, It could be that we, we're brothers, but I don't know. I never knew him growing up or nothing. Well... That's all the time we got left for this episode of Infected. Martin, that, will you tell us the story? We really don't have time for a story. Please. Though. Come on. All right. Please, Martin. All right. We got time for one short story. Yay. This is the story of Philip the IT guy. Philip was an IT guy for a mid-sized company that made plastic cutlery. All day long, he was called from cubicle to cubicle, fixing people's computer problems. These people, if one can call them people, are so stupid, Philip IM'd his best friend Richard, also an IT guy but a different company. 
Actually, Philip and Richard had never met in person. They, they lived in different states, but were in the same World of Warcraft guild. Today, Philip continued, I had to help a female in human resources install a mouse. A mouse! I'm fairly certain a mouse, and that is to say a rodent, has sufficient brain capacity to install a mouse. Lol. R-O-T-F-L, Earl responded. One day after work, Philip's company hosted a party at an El Torito restaurant to celebrate its rise in profits. This is so stupid, Philip muttered under his breath, half a chimichanga in his ogre-like mouth. Look how drunk all these people are. They're making asses of themselves. Just then, Steve from accounting yelled over, Hey, Phil, why don't you come over here and tell us how much better Linux is than Windows? I haven't heard that story yet this week. Shut up, Steven. It's not like you'd be able to comprehend the intricacies of my argument anyway. Have another drink, you rube. Just then, Patty, a chunky yet pretty-faced new employee in accounts payable, walked up to Philip. Hi, I'm Patty, she said. I'd like to hear about Linux. Then do a Google search on it, female. My guild members are expecting me at 1900 hours. They'd be doomed without their cleric. And Philip left Applebee's, driving his 1987 Mitsubishi Mirage home to his squalid, dark apartment. An apartment where he lived alone for the next six years, before choking on a Geno's pizza roll and dying. The end. And that's the story of Philip the IT guy. <laughs> I like that story. That was a good, that was a good one. That's all laugh of the poor bastard who died. <laughs> it's funny because it's true. I knew he was going to die at the end of it, too. I was just waiting for it. <laughs> He's like, I thought he was going to crash his car. <laughs> but I liked it better that he had to live alone in the dark house for six years <laughs> before he died. Yeah, he the way he treated Patty. He could have had Patty. It's not right. A virgin oh, fat fuck. You know, Joey, Philip wears a trench coat too. I forgot to mention that in the, in the story. But he hasn't cut his hair yet. He's got a long ponytail. <laughs> and he wears Tevas. I'm a beautiful tulip now. I am now a beautiful tulip. So watch out, world. What's that skin disease? Where your skin gets really dry. That's psoriasis. psoriasis. I have to wear my Tevas because I have psoriasis. I wear my white socks and my Tevas sandals <laughs> so my feet can get air. I need to powder my, 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 uh, my huge white thighs. I know it's not proper dress code for the office, but I got a special pardon because I have, <laughs> sci I have psoriasis. It's a medical condition. Well, that's really all the time we got. For Joey and the Gator, this is Martin Sargent oh, saying, fuck. Don't get ripped by the riptides. Good night. That's all there is today for this episode of Infected. And if you've been still been listening, you're infected. There's nothing you can do about it. You're terribly, terribly sick. You're infected. Perhaps you might have bird flu, avian bird flu, and one day you'll wake up and you'll be in a plastic tin, a bubble-like thing, and there'll be a doctor there pointing at a picture of Joey. I don't know. Maybe it'll be someone else, but you'll be infected and you'll be very sick and ready to die. So I hope that you've enjoyed it, and I hope that you will just continue listening if you want to be infected. Infected. I'm frozen, I'm getting. <laughs> hey, I go put in a riptide. <laughs> no! <laughs> oh! Flash, I'm coming back, I'm coming for you. <laughs> oh! Hey kids, I'm television Martin Sergeant telling you, don't get ripped by the riptide. <laughs> Infected was written by Martin Sargent and Jay Speeden. Joseph Jean-Claude Janet Reno Rabier on controls. Get some hello hero on that show. It burns! I got psoriasis. <laughs> <laughs>